Hi everyone, welcome back to Monte Cassino Battlefield Tours. Danila speaking again about the Battle of Cassino, the iconic symbols of the Battle of Cassino. Stand number four, Castle Hill or Point 193. Castle Hill was the name given by the Allied soldiers in 1944. However, the name of this castle is Rocca Janula. We are still uncertain about the etymology of the name. There are two assumptions. One refers to a Latin word, Janua, which means door or gateway to casino, and the other one to a temple dedicated to the Roman god Janus, but up to now, no remnants of the temple had ever been found. The castle was built by the abbot Aligerno around year 1000. After the first two destructions of the monastery, the first one by the Longobards in 593 and the second by the Saracens in 883, the monks wanted to protect the monastery from further invasions. The castle was the century of Monte Cassino, the armoured eye of the monastery for many centuries. The castle was rebuilt after the war, but there are some original parts still in place, which I will be pleased to show you during our tour. With our multimedia presentation, you'll be able to understand the stratifications and the historical events that went on from the first construction of the castle to the modern reconstruction. After the bombing of Casino on the 15 February 1944 and its ruins transformed into a fortress by the German paratroopers, the Allies decided to bomb also the town of Casino. In the town, the Germans had fortified the stone buildings uh, from September 1943, since we surrendered to the Allies. The town people were forced to leave and the Casino fortified. On the 15 March 1944, the Allied launched a massive air attack against Cassino and the occupying German forces. Over 1,000 tons of bombs were dropped on Cassino, about 5 tons of explosive each soldier, reducing, reducing the town into a mass of craters. About 50% of the German paratroopers were able to survive in their underground reinforced position and the rubble made it easier for them to defend. It was now the turn of the New Zealanders to lead the offensive, together with the Indians and British troops. The plan was to attack the town of Casino, then move up to the castle overlooking it. From there, start the assault to the mountain, first to Angman's Hill, then to the monastery. An Indian brigade was ordered to take the castle hill, led by the first fourth Essex Regiment. The Essex men came largely from the East End of London. The East Enders had signed up well before the war began, largely volunteers with a great sense of comradeship. They were rural people, fishermen. In 1980s, I lived in London and I used to work in the East End of London, Whitechapel, Bishop Gates, Brick Lane, where these chaps came from. I can easily relate with them, as I understand their culture and background with the Cockney rhyming slang. In March 1944, elements of the 1st, 4th Essex, along with the Gurkhas, were able to reach Hangman's Hill, which is located only 250 metres from the monastery, but unable to attack, for the lack of ammunition, food, water, and suffering continuous shell fire isolated in their position. The Essex also held the castle for five long days. The honourable fighting with the armistice and truce that followed the various attacks up there were um, some of uh, the most honourable pages, emotional pages written on the Battle of Monte Cassino, where both the English and Germans were able to recuperate their dead and wounded. The castle became the crucial point of the Third Battle of Cassino. The Germans realized that capturing the castle would shut the door and prevent further entry to the hill and launched a series of counterattacks which were repulsed at great cost. 200 of 250 attackers dead or wounded. The first fourth Essex received 
superb support from the artillery, and they were able to hold their positions, but they also suffered huge losses. Meanwhile, in the town of Cassino below, less progress was made. The German paratroopers were defending every square hinge of the ruins of the town, and the fighting became ferocious, house to house, ruin to ruin. On the 20th March, it was clear for the Allied commanders that the frontal attack to the monastery had failed. The 1st 4th Essex Regiment never lost the castle, but they were asked to withdraw. That was the end of the third battle. The town and the hills were still in German hands. The Gustav line had held for now, and the big, big battle was still to come. The British and Germans fought face to face, with high casualties on both sides, writing some of the most historic pages of the Battle of Monte Cassino. I will be pleased to share with you the veteran story and show the location of this epic battle. Stand number five, Casino War Cemetery. It is the largest Commonwealth War Cemetery in Italy, the final resting place of over 4,000 British and Commonwealth servicemen, of which 284 are known. Beautifully maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, the land was donated by the Italians. The architect, Louis de Soissons, was the Commission's chief architect for Second World War cemeteries and memorials in Italy and Greece. Casino War Cemetery is one of the most evocative locations anywhere on the Second World War battlefields of Europe and the world. Classical design with the reflected pool, which is the centerpiece for the whole cemetery and memorial. When you look into the pool, you see reflections not only of the cross of sacrifice, but also Monte Cassino looming large over the cemetery. But the memorial too is a focal point for the cemetery. It was unveiled in 1956 by Field Marshal Harold Alexander, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Forces in Italy, and on it are engraved in golden letters the names of over 4,000 servicemen who lost their lives in Sicily and in Italy, who have no known graves. This is a cemetery that combines the best of Italian design with servicemen who died here, who came from all over the world to fight. British, Canadians, New Zealanders, Indians, Gurkhas, South Africans. But like the looking presence of Monte Cassino behind, this cemetery is a reminder of the experiences and efforts of soldiers who came from all over the world to fight not just for Italy and its liberation, but for the liberation of Europe and the world. A poignant tribute to the death and the missing. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Relatives of Maori, Kiwis, Canadians, New Zealanders, all together during my tour paying respect to the fallen. May they rest in peace. Stand number six, the Gary River, also known as the Rapido. In any World War II map, book, documentary or movie about the Battle of Casino, 
The name given to the river, where the 36th Texas Division first attempt to cross in January 1944, is the Rabido, but the name is wrong. The correct name of the river is Gari. It's a bit confusing, but I will try to make it clearer for you. In Casino area, there are three main rivers, the Rapido coming from the east, which flows into the Gari River and finishes its course, well before the crossing points of the 36th Division. The Gari River, whose spring waters are in the town of Casino, and the Liri River, flowing from the east towards the west, and in the Liri Valley, the Gari River joins the Liri and change, changes its name into Garigliano. Mark Clark, commander of the US 5th Army, thought that a frontal assault across the river would open a gap in the Gustav line big enough to pour armor through. The job was given to the 36th Infantry Division. The division, formed from Texas National Guard, was front and center in one of the bloodiest and most controversial episodes of the Italian campaign. The 36th Texas Division, identified by their distinctive blue arrowhead patch with a T in the middle of it, it was the first US combat unit to land in the Italian mainland. On the 9th September 1943, was the baptism of fire for the tea patchers on the beaches of Salerno during Operation Avalanche. By the time they reached Casino area, many had been killed in action or wounded and replaced by GIs from all over the US, but the 36 never lost its Texas identity. On the 20th January 1944, Major General Fred Walker, commander of the 36, wrote in his diary, the river is the principal obstacle of the German main line of resistance. I do not know of a single case in military history where an attempt to cross an affordable river that is incorporating to the enemy's main line of resistance has succeeded. So according to the history, we may not succeed. The assault went wrong from the start. German mines and shells ripping the assault troops to shreds. The night of the assault turned into a slaughter, but that didn't deter Clark from ordering another attempt, this time in daylight. Clark urged the 36th Division officers to use valor as well as boats. If courage was all what was required, the Rapido River assault would have had a different outcome. The 36th, which had already been depleted by battles before the Rapido, lost more than half of the personnel in its rifle companies. One battalion lost three company commanders in two days. More than 1,600 men killed, wounded, or reported missing in action. There was a cover-up of sorts after the disaster, and the incident might have, have escaped public notice had non-members of the 36th Division Association loudly demand an investigation after the war. Reluctant to conduct one, the army predictably concluded no one had done anything wrong. It was war, after all, and in war people get killed. Then the Rapido River crossings was largely forgotten. In 2015, I personally traveled to Texas to visit museums, the key sites, to learn about the veteran stories, to see the location where these soldiers came from. It was a memorable journey, as I could meet again children and relatives of veterans who fought in Italy and that I had met during my tours in the past years. I also did research in the Austin Capitol Archive, finding important documents 
related to their battles, including the report of the veteran associations against Mark Clark for the crossing of the Rapido. I'll be glad to share with you all this information that I collected through the years regarding the heroic tea patchers. I've been leading tours in their footsteps for over a decade for relatives of veterans as well as military up to three-star generals. You can book with us a day tour for a bespoke itinerary or a multiple day tour from Salerno to Rome, including San Pietro, Cassino and Anzio. We're Americans by birth or Texans by the grace of God. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Remember them. And number seven, Mount Trocchio. Mount Trocchio lies across the face of the Liri Valley, like a giant shield within a few miles of range of uh, Monte Cassino and the Gustav line, and well serviced by the Highway 6, so an exceptional logistic fortified natural position. It has an unusual shape. If you look carefully, it resembles a long knife-edged ridge, or as one of the monks of Monte Cassino told me, like the hat of Napoleon. There are other curiosities that I will talk about Monte Trocchio during my tour. However, its strategic importance had been recognized well before the Second World War. On top of Mount Trocchio are the ruins of a castle built as outpost by the monks of Monte Cassino around mid of the 10th centuries. You know that the Monte Cassino Abbey had been destroyed already twice, Saracens and Longobards, so the castle had the purpose, um, the defensive purpose. The etymology of the name Trocchio, which is quite unusual really, comes from the Latin Trocolus, which means big tower. In the Chronicle of Monte Cassino, we know that this castle was one of the many properties of the land of San Benedict, Terra Santi Benedict, that in the Middle Age extended for a large area for hundreds of kilometers from the spring water of the Rapido River up to the mouth of the Garigliano River. Late in 1943, early January 1944, Monte Trocchio, like any other mountain in this area, was a German defense position. That's an aerial view of Mount Trocchio, taken from uh, an American Piper Cub observation plane, looking down on Route 6, which runs past the German held Monte Porcia at the, in the bottom, around Monte Trocchio and on into Monte Cassino in the background. On the 15th January 1944, elements of the 34 Division, the Red Bulls, were able to take it. Conquering Mount Trocchio was an ideal spot to observe the movements going on in the Liri Valley in Cassino area. It was not too hard to take it, in fact, the Germans had started to retreat, as von Sanger declared to Walter Cronkite a few years later. Watch this. In order to be able to build the main line as a defensive one, you have to defend yourself with uh, uh, less numerous troops further south. So this uh, led to uh, the establishment of what we call the Bernard Line and you the Winter Line, which is some 10 to 15 miles further south, and tried to defend it as if it were the main line. 
that's a picture of a woman who I admire very much. Her name is Margaret Bourke-White. The pictures taken of Monte Trocchio in January and February 1944 were taken by her, a woman of many firsts. She was the first female American war photojournalist allowed in World War II combat zones, the first official photographer for the Air Force, first female photographer of Live magazine. That's why she was sent here. She asked to be sent in the um, European theater of operations. She was also at the concentration camp of Buchenwald when this was open. She said, using a camera was almost a relief. It interposed a slight barrier between myself and the order in front of me. I wanted to remember her because her aerial views are of the area of Casino are amazing, and I would be glad to do a bespoke tour, a bespoke itinerary, following her footstep from Naples to Casino. That's a picture of uh, Margaret Burke White while in Monte Trocchio. Her camera on tripods behind her as she prepares to shoot the night shelling of Mount Trocchio. Mount Trocchio was uh, extremely important for communication, and this picture you see the Army Lieutenant Robert Maxwell on telephone dictating the position. He's getting from night patrols on position of German guns to soldiers, who is riding all it down in his security position near Monte Trocchio. After the first battle, when um, the 2nd New Zealand Corps replaced the 36th Texas Division after the failure of the Rapido, um, Monte Trocchio became very important uh, again for the um, for observations for the New Zealanders. It's also sadly connected to an episode that happened, um, an incident to the commander of the New Zealanders, Howard uh, Kippenberger, on in the afternoon of uh, March second, nineteen forty four. The able New Zealand division commander climbed Monte Trocchio to survive the approach to Highway 6 and tripped an undetected S mine. The blast blew off on foot and mangled the other so badly the surgeon trimmed it away. At dawn of the third battle, that was something terrible for the commander Kippenberger, but also for the Kiwi soldiers that trusted him so much. Monte Trocchio again was a key position in the last battle of Monte Cassino Operation Diadem and um, the eight battery, eight 25 pounders located behind Monte Trocchio formed a small part of the 1600 Allied guns that shoot any German position in the last battle starting from the 11 May, 11 PM. The entire area burst into life with thunder and lightning. The whole hillside trembled with the shock and the night was alight. Mount Trocchio served its purpose as shield, creating an artillery sanctuary barely two miles from the Gustav Line and three miles from Monte Cassino Abbey. Stand number eight, Highway 6 and the Liri Valley. All the roads lead to Rome and no exception for our Highway 6. The ancient Via Latina built by the Romans in the 4th century BC when they conquered this area. In the Middle Age, changed its name into Via Casilina, as Casilinum was the name of Capua, located north of Naples, where the road ends. Highway 6 was the name given by the Allies in 1943. It was the only route straight to Rome, as the modern highway, the Autostrada del Sole, was built, built only in the 60s. But why was so important Route 6? For the Allies. You will learn during my tours all the problems and the logistics problems that uh, the Allied had during the Italian campaign using mule tracks instead of roads. It was only in May with improved weather conditions and above all with overwhelming Allied forces that the road to Rome became wide open and this road was through the Liri Valley. For five long months, the Allied tried but failed to smash the German defenses at Monte Cassino. 
May 11, 1944, the regular shelling had almost stopped and a silent had fallen over the Liri Valley and Monte Cassino. The four exhausted German divisions defending the Gustav line were unaware of the 13 Allied divisions built up secretly against them. On 11 May at 11 p.m., the veterans of Monte Cassino were involved in this battle, said that it was clear like midday and everything was bright as the 16 cannons shoot any known German position. The Allied and German troops were now engaged in a battle of 23 miles wide. Allied soldiers from all over the world united, finally defeated the stubborn enemy. Soldiers from United Kingdom, New Zealand, Canada, India, America, French expeditionary forces, Polish, South Africans broke through the Liri Valley. The battles of Casino were the battle for Rome. But once the, that the Gustav line fell on the 18th May 1944, also Rome was taken on the 4th of June 1944. In the end, the Allied forces were successful, but here success took time. Five long months were required until Cassino was full in Allied ends. The Battle of Monte Cassino was one of the first of the Second World War. The kind of combat and losses were similar in scale to the Battle of Stalingrad in the First World War. Monte Cassino was soon forgotten. It was overshadowed by D-Day and became one of the least remembered episodes of the Second World War. The warning comes from Ernie Pyle, who wrote on his book, The Brave Men, the following words, France was our grand finale. We were very successful there. But we do not have to forget or belittle those campaigns who went before. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the Battle of Casino and the iconic symbols of the battle. I'll be waiting for you to come back when the emergency of COVID-19 will be over and we all be free to travel again. I would like to end this presentation with the words written by a veteran of the Battle of Monte Cassino. His name is Fred Medjalani, a British officer of the 78th Division, the famous Battle Hacks Division, who after the war became a journalist and in 1957 published a book of the Battle of Monte Cassino. And he wrote the following words. Cassino is so costly in human life and suffering and though deprived at the last of full victory that could have made it worthwhile, was in the end little more than a victory of human spirit, an elegy for the common soldier, a memorial to the definite horror of war and the curiously perverse paradoxical nobility of the battle. I salute you, Danila from Monte Cassino Battlefield Tours. Thank mm -hmm. you.